encourage youth in schools to think of ways in which they can change their environment in light of the city's climate priorities, which includes an increase in renewable energy production, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, adaptation to climate change and building resilience, promoting green mobility, inclusive citizen participatory approach, and accessing climate finance among, among others. Following the launch, it is important that youth are mindful of the important debates. I bet you take your pens and papers and uh, please note these important dates. There is uh, the date for application release date, uh, which is Friday, 24th May, 2020, So this is the launch and uh, I'm sure there are papers that are already being stacked on our walls and the papers that will be distributed here uh, to confirm uh, the launch. So you will be able to read and uh, uh, take pictures of uh, the information that is required. So I urge the youth that are here to take note of this and uh, ensure that before they leave this place, they get the necessary details so that they will enable you to, to progress forward. So there's application deadline, which is Monday, the 1st of July, 2024, which means we've got a, a, a month and a few days to submit the applications. Our days announced that will be Friday, the 12th of July, 2024. Then final project invoice, December 31, 2024, Final report due January 31, 2025. So those that did not capture this information, no worries, because uh, it is contained in our website and uh, the papers that are going to be uh, distributed will have more details that will direct you according. The city has availed the various platforms through which the youth can apply. We have online platforms through which they can ask and get information on the application process. Apply online and they will have forms available at the various municipal offices, which include the city hall, tower block, recreational centers like this one, a set up revenue halls, and a set up in a municipal libraries. So we'll try to ensure that all council institutions have got this information for ease of access to places near to where you reside. I therefore encourage you to take all this opportunity and make sure you submit your application by the 1st of July, 2024. Uh, before I sit, let me wish all those youths that will partake in this exercise uh, good luck. Uh, and ensure that they do their work diligently to ensure they meet and they comply with the application requirements. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very important day today. We are launching the Youth Climate Action Fund project for the city of Bulawayo. It's an international project where we've been able to be given funds to help us take care of our environment and ensure that we are protected or we are able to manage the impact of climate change. Um, as we continue the program, I just want you to lift up your hands. If you planted 10 trees starting from January up to now. Anyone? Okay, um, afternoon everyone. My name is Pesti Mokesi and I'm also a junior counselor. So I started my own tree plantation of orange trees. So I was inspired by this orange trees I made. So I wanted to start my own enterprises. So I have this big space in my backyard. So I used it to plant my orange trees. So right now they're about three months old and they're growing very fruitfully. And I'm hoping to do something with those trees. 
Um, my name is Zebrul Masialeti. I'm from the Vlad Nesim country. I'm the current deputy mayor. I've planted well over, I think, 15 trees in my neighborhood. I did so because uh, I noticed the emission of carbon dioxide by the cars. So I thought it would be a good initiative. Thank you. Salabonani. I'm Mozi. Um, I've planted more than 60 trees this year. Um, it's my little gift to the future. The trees have been planted um, in my neighborhood uh, that is here in Pumula. Uh, some are in the Church of Christ, some are in Roman Catholic Church in Pumula South, um, and some are in Harvey in Pumula Family. Thank you, uh, we meet at the launch of an in exciting initiative and allow me to congratulate the city fathers and mothers for, for, for this initiative. Three very topical issues of our time have been combined into one intervention, which speaks to the well-considered initiative. First, for the youths who are facing a brave new world that their parents did not have to deal with, a world shaped by information in the information age from not just the neighborhood, but also right across the, the globe. A worldview that constantly tests the boundaries, boundaries without knowing the attendant risks. A world where what you learn today must continuously be upgraded or you become irrelevant. A world of dangerous drugs and substances, teenage pregnancies, frequent disease outbreaks, and the list goes on. But the youth, as usual, are also adaptable, trainable, and above all, very innovative. How do those of us in positions of leadership respond to them and their challenges is one of the key questions of our time. Second, the issue of the environment. How to eke out a living from almighty God's creation in a way that's, sustain, that's sustainable for this generation and the future ones. And that leads us back to the youth. Climate change is a clear and present danger to us all. And the just ended summer season was a huge wake up call to what we are facing. What is it that we, can, we need to do to stop to, what we need to stop doing, to start doing and to continue doing to enhance that environmental sustainability? Remember I referred to how innovative the youth are. These initiatives throws the question at you, the youth. And before I forget, uh, what uh, the acting town clerk said, uh, that he called to, to, to action by the mayor, is in the chronicle. I don't want you to say you didn't have information. I just thought I should, there's a website, but there's the chronicle as well. I took a picture of it, I can tell you that. Third is the issue of entrepreneurship and they need to promote it among the youth. This is the source of my excitement today. The equation is youth, environment, and entrepreneurship. Let me say no more, lest I spoil a well-prepared dish. Your worship, thank you for this initiative. It has the potential to change lives. I know of a young man, I'd hoped he would come because I'd asked him to come who is into uh, recycling. Uh, those are the people that I think this initiative will speak to. Stand up and be counted. You guys have the most incredible uh, imaginations. Let it not end in those kits that you put on the internet. Let it end with products. Some have planted 60 trees this year. What is it that you are going to, to do? The young man I'm talking about is called Lovu, and he recycles plastic into tiles. And I, I, I hope he's here somewhere so that he can tell you what is possible. So, Your Worship, councillors, thank you for this initiative. I shall say no more. Thank you very much. Bulawayo my pride, Bulawayo my home, Bulawayo my alpha, Bulawayo my omega, Bulawayo the beautiful city of kings and queens. MC no go Bulawayo go to to zia tunga go faso shy in dota go mta nami when delenga pi. When ya magai pay ligu pelamas nyendo ta. Babeta ibulawo ngiyala ngiyafunga ngiy.
Pumula Church. Bulawayo my pride, Bulawayo my home. Bulawayo my omega. Bulawayo the beautiful city of kings and queens. MC Nogo Bulawayo going to Tuzia Tunga Gonfazo Shain Dota Gomta Nami Wendele Ngapi. Kwa ya magai peli kupela mazi nye ndota. Babeta e Bulawe nyala nya funga nya ninda nya kafula nya komela. Lapo penganya bie buje. I saw si Bulawe. Watintu Bulawayo zo imela ini. Angilu nya buza nji just. Bulawayo the city of kings and queens. The name Bulawayo emanated from King Shaka's headquarters kwa Bulawayo. Bye. Ete, we na wezo. Babeta ibulawe, I saw zibulawe. Nimfu nguta tobo gaba bale ko minga zalu muntu emsanjanjela. Ubulawa yo li kukuletu. Ibulawa yo so chiswe ngenda lue so kwa makama. Okbali se la mangri wa se kama matama se ilisaiti. Enkabe ni yeto lopo kumu mtala wetu wa kangela enyarato. Ya, that's our city. Bulawa yo my pride. Kontu tu ziatu nga yilo i kukuletu. Ekumalo was named after the Ndebele Royal Ken Senem Umachobana Ichakeli Zali Nkosi Ashaya Kritali Nkomo Zama Wabam U King Mziligaz Therefore Mziligaz was named after the King of the Ndebele State Umziligaz Gama Shobana Lope Ngula was named after the Prince King Lope Ngula Kumalo Ingu Ngule Mato Labo Vunguku Teta Zini Laba Fowabo Owa Salinga Buto Ungu Boye Nja Lonjube Lendo Taka Zufamona Los Tojiwe Payete Bulawayo Payete Siswe Sama Kosi Lama Kosi Kosigazim, ubula wa yoyi kukuletu, ikaziletu, umoya wetu, hilo vendu nendu na sibilim, watintu ubula wa yoyi uzo imela ini, angi ilu inyabuza nje chas. Si asikanya ngo machabala linjo fuka ase zali nko sulo pengula, tina sakula nge mfundiso eti umuntu ngumuntu ngabantu, umko keli inko keli ngabala ndeli bayo, inko si inko si lesi nduna zayo, nikuluma ngoba nina, sangisho sinia chief makwekwe fuyane, o chief kwa wala ndamate, o chief luveve, Unga senza ni yitu bula wayo Ngo kwa kiti loku si kwa bangako Uwe na gunga po kwa gini Emma Kanden was named after the regiment Emma Kandam Minu wa ila po ulele kona inko Sum zilika se msa sanje la guse ntumbane Au suga mato tubu shebetu Epe landaba gula po kwa kutlala kona Umtala wetu Joshua Nkomo Kanye lo reverend se mwayo Nia bengi nga pele li sanga manga kulu manga Ngunkulu mane kumalo Kanye la se makumeni ase papa Fields Kwa the home ground of Highlanders Ama sola nyama is located the city of Lawayo should be desired more than gold and platinum. Payete Bulawayo, Payete Buenaweso. As for three people that uh, will give me each a uh, water conservation tip, you are not allowed to repeat what the next person is saying. And also, you must be honest. Don't tell me things that you are not doing. And then as they come, I would ask for Mandy Sanyoni to come. 
because this project is also looking at us, how we can turn waste into money, waste into energy. Mandisa has been working on an art piece. She says you'd like to show us. Mandisa, can you please come? Okay, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, so my name is Mandisa Nozinchenyoni. I am an upcycling artist, glass artist. So basically what I do is I collect uh, bottles from the streets and glass from the beans, like from glass cutting companies. And then I crush those and then I create an image. So um, this is the image that I have today. I created an African woman uh, to represent uh, Africa Day. Uh, so let me show you. Uh, this one is 250, yes, 250. So I can create anything from animals to buildings to landscapes, all from glass. Yeah, so that's what I do, this is my passion and I'm, um, I'm very fortunate to be able to do this um, and show people what's possible with trash, taking trash and making it into something uh, beautiful and quality art as well. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, may we just acknowledge and appreciate this. This is beautiful. Can you see the keys? Yeah. So I, I, I wonder why the keys are by the ears, because you have to listen more than you speak. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, I'm Miss Pumula. Miss Pumula. Yes, I'm Miss Pumula. Yes, I'm Miss Pumula. Okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm a water Z2. I will start with number one. We must supposed to check our water meter to identify if there is water leaks. Yeah, okay. Um, are you are you reading your meter? How often? Twice a day. All right. Thank you. So twice a day you can be identifying water leaks. Actually, this is Pumula North, so let's get in. I'm going to figure out what level he meets higher cup and mistake on a bond. So it is, we just check it every time because I want to be correct on that. Okay, thank you, um, Nem. Um, thank you so much. Salibo na ani, biza la mingu tana kache kwa. So mina eya mingi tukongo na. We have to take shorter baths. Like instead of taking a shower for one hour or so, we have to minimize, maybe take it for five minutes. Okay, thank you. Is there another person, that person? It is so good to uh, be with you this afternoon. This is a very exciting project. I want to tell you the genesis of this. Um, late last year, a few of us from the council uh, were privileged to go to COP28 in Dubai. Mrs. Mpofu was there and a few other of our, our colleagues went there. And I, I had the opportunity to meet Michael Bloomberg. For those who, of you who don't know Michael Bloomberg, he is the former uh, mayor of New York. Um, he is the founder of Bloomberg.com, uh, Bloomberg News, uh, and he is a wonderful uh, a person, a, a very generous man, who has set up an organization called Bloomberg Philanthropics. We had a brief meeting, but a, a very constructive meeting, and because he was mayor of New York, he has a particular passion uh, for cities throughout the world. He understands that cities are where the vast majority of people are, particularly young people, and he understands the need for cities and young people to be at the very forefront of climate change initiatives. 
to combat climate change. And he encouraged us to apply, and uh, we applied this year, as the town clerk has said, and we've been successful. We are one of a few cities in Africa, one of a few cities in the world to be granted this. I also need to tell you that we are working very closely with Bloomberg in a, a number of other ways. Um, in January, I was one of 15 African mayors to go to Cape Town. Uh, it included the mayors of Lusaka, of Vintuk, of Nairobi, of Freetown, uh, Addis Ababa, and we are now part of this group for this year, something called a Mali, African Mayors Leadership Institute. And uh, as our staff know, we are now working very closely with Amali. It works out of the University of Cape Town. They are working with us on a, a data program so that we can use the existing data in the city to improve service delivery. But another aspect, of course, is this youth climate change initiative. Now, before I go to speak about the detail, and the town clerk has given you the practical detail of how to apply and, and all of that, I want to speak about the problem, what we are seeking to, to address in this, our beloved city. All of us know what happened this past rainy season. Because of El Nino and because of climate change, this was one of the worst rainy seasons we have experienced in many, many years. I'm an old man now. I'm 66. I came to the city in 1961. I cannot remember a February like the February we experienced. In fact, the records throughout Southern Africa are that February was the driest and hottest February ever. And that has impacted our ability, as you all know in Pumula, our ability to supply water. Most of you, I'm sure, are getting at best water one day a week, if that. Some of you are even worse off than that. That is a reflection of our dams. As I speak today, our dams are sitting at 35% capacity. At this time of year, after even a good, after a bad rainy season, we would hope that they would be at about 70%, but they are sitting at 35%. That situation of a lack of rainfall has been made all the, the worse because of what we have allowed to happen in our nation in the last 20 years or so. Young people, instead of going to university, instead of being employed in factories, in businesses, many young people have had their dreams shattered and have not been able to, to do that, as you, many of you know. And they have gone into gold mining, into gold panning. And whilst, gold, whilst our country is richly endowed with gold and we must exploit mining to the best of our ability, the way it has been done in the environs of this, our city, has been devastating. Just south of here, between the city and Esogodini, we have most of our six, we, we have our six dams. And virtually all of the river courses leading to those dams have been badly affected by gold panning. And that, the, the gold panning, for reasons I understand, I'm very sympathetic towards young people, of course. You need an income, you need employment, you need a future. But because of the gold panning that has taken place in those rivers, our rivers have been destroyed. And so even when it rains, the water doesn't get to our dams. If we think closer to home about our city, if we think of Pumula as a suburb, we see very few trees that have been planted. In the past, trees were planted in our city. There are suburbs that have a lot of trees, they're like, they're like forests. One of the indictments against us all, particularly in the high density suburbs, is that we have not planted trees in the high density suburbs in particular. And that's not just about beautifying the city. 
It's not just about the fact that trees absorb carbon and help climate change. But science shows that where there are trees, the temperature in those areas drops. Sometimes by as much as 5 to 10 degrees. There are scientific papers out there. You can read them. And where the temperature drops, people become more productive. When we plant trees, we keep the soil together. And that in turn means that there's less erosion to clog up our drains and our river systems and ultimately silt our dams. So these basic issues are critical for our future, absolutely critical for our future. Then there's one final problem, and I'm speaking about the problems first before I move on to the solutions. If we look just outside this center, you will see litter everywhere. If you walk right across our city, you will see plastic bottles that affect our city, that clog up our city. And it's not just about beautifying our cities. Those plastic bottles are often swept into our drainage systems and block up our sewage plants and affect our ability to um, process water. So these are all major problems that affect all of us. And it is critical that we work together but particularly with this coming generation. It is crucial that you young people understand that your future depends on us tackling these issues together. It is, it is in that context that we are so grateful to Bloomberg Philanthropics, who've come forward uh, with this uh, project working with the city which calls upon, young, calls upon young people to design, produce, and govern urgent climate solutions in our great city, but also then to act uh, as an example for other cities and our, our entire nation. So this project is designed specifically for young people aged between 15 and 24. It's born of the realization, as I was saying just now, that young people are the most important ingredient for our future. If young people understand the nature of the problems that, that I've just spoken about, and if they adopt those, those issues themselves and devise the solutions to, that, to, to those problems, then we will have a future. So it is... It is our role as your city fathers and city mothers to work with you closely to develop plans that will address these issues going forward. So this, friends, this afternoon, this project this afternoon provides you all as young people with a unique opportunity. It is not often that we get a generous grant of 50,000 US dollars for young people to devise plans to address their future. And the challenge for you this afternoon is to think of what you can do in your schools, with your youth groups, with your different um, youth organizations and associations, how you can devise plans over the, the rest of this year to help us start turning the corner in changing the future of our great city. We, in the forms, will, you, you will see, have shared our climate priorities that, that is set out in the application forms. And, and these include including renewable energy productions, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. How do we adapt to climate change and, and build resilience in our city? How do we promote green mobility? How do we promote citizen participation?
and critically citizen understanding of the nature of the problems and, and how to deal with them. And, and going forward, how do we access more finance for climate change initiatives? These are all encompassed in this program. So we are going to be looking forward to your proposals. I, I hope that you will be enthusiastic, as only young people can be enthusiastic in the coming weeks, that you will have debates in your schools particularly. I said to, to our team that I want a particular focus on our schools. It is critically important that schools be, in, be involved in this and be competitive, as you might be on the sports field. We want to see the best proposals coming from different schools and try to adjudicate to award um, to, to reward those schools that come up with the best plans. These programs can include climate education programs, youth climate hackathons, youth developed climate surveys and research, youth informed clubs or curriculum. They can also include uh, youth driven climate mitigation and adaption projects. Let me come to the issue of of trees. Um, one of my passions isn't just about the, the planting of any trees. I, pr I believe that we need to focus on indigenous trees. If you go to suburbs um, east of the city, you will see that there are a lot of jacaranda trees there, but they are from Brazil. They're not from Zimbabwe, and they are dying off. We've got many types of indigenous trees that are obviously best suited to our city and our climate. And so I encourage you to think not just about the planting of trees, but how do we start developing indigenous tree nurseries in schools and, and other areas going forward? How do we make those income generating projects for youth so that um, climate change initiatives are are self-sustaining. So please think about things like that. And then finally, of course, this needs to be an interaction. If this is going to succeed, we need a close interaction between young people, young people's groups, and the city council in particular, because we want to work hand in glove with you. In that way, uh, these projects will not only be successful, but they will be sustainable in future. So um, it is a delight to be here this afternoon to, to launch this program. And I know that all the councillors and I uh, and the government represented by the Permanent Secretary are going to be looking forward to your innovation, your ideas, uh, which will be shown in, in the various applications that you put in. So get to work. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Your Worship. A big hand of applause. Yeah, so they don't grow so they they this one is yours, I'm told. It's all Yeah. Um, I've got a word of caution for all of us today. Please, junior city councillors, um, with respect to our guys who've done this, one cannot just plant a tree like this. Uh, for trees to survive, they must have at least a meter and a half, and it should be filled with good soil. So I'm going to ask our, our uh, department, of, our parks department, to come back. We will do a we'll, we will do a, a sort of ceremonial planting, but these will not survive like this. Um, so please understand, and, and this community understand, this 
This is ceremonial. It's not. This, okay, Where, where's the shovel? Thank you. Thank you. Right, this needs lots of water, but it needs a much deeper hole. Is it? Uh, yeah. It's be at least a meter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Are we going to water it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's another one. 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 another one. There's 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 another one. There's
This is a sort of a campaign in the form of a half marathon charity run that will be held on the 29th of June, 2024. The purpose of the run is to fight against drugs and substance abuse within the community and outside the community. So we are inviting all of you to partake in this charity half marathon run that will be held from uh, Food for Less uh, in the CPD. The run will kickstart at 6 a.m. up to St. Bernard's Mission. It's almost around 12 kilometers. So we have got uh, no cutoff uh, age. The old, the young, uh, even those that uh, will be born on the very day, <laughs> uh, they are welcome to partake in the charity run. So there's a registration fee which will go um, to alleviate suffering and to alleviate poverty within the community by helping the elderly on the day, the old age. And we have got also our students who are visually impaired that want to buy some braille so that when they read, uh, they don't have challenges. So we are inviting the the His Worship, the Mayor, to be there on the very day, provided his program does not clash. We'll also give him the opportunity also to rub shoulders with our old age people and the community of Pumula. Uh, all of you uh, young people, take this opportunity. I know you have got a lot of challenges that you undergo in the community, but let this be an opportunity for you to think wise, to say no to drugs, and to embrace good things. Uh, some people, they say, we live once and we die every day because of drugs. But I want to say, we die once, we live every day. So let us embrace this opportunity. See you there. Thank you so much. Thank you. So please register. It's on the 29th of June, so you can take part, look after your body, just as much as you look after our environment. Siabonga, allow me to invite our junior mayor, His Worship, um, Tabo Ngwenya, to please give us the vote of thanks as we close the program. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, the Minister of State, Provincial Affairs, Devolution, Honorable Jay Nube, represented by the Permanent Secretary. Uh, His Worship, Senator David Coated, the Mayor of Bulawayo, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Inyati Indlovu, and Councillor and Councillors here present, Permanent Secretary, Mr. Pignoni, the Town Clerk, Mr. C. Dube, Heads of uh, heads of council department, the junior mayors Lindogu Shevelapi and the junior councillors here present, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend my appreciation to the Minister of State and Provincial Affairs, Honorable Jay Nube, and His Worship, Senator David Coated, the Mayor of Bulawayo, for the, wi for the wise wisdom shared here today. On how uh, the youth can change the face of our city and the country with regards to climate change. They, 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 are, they bring about a, co a consolidation with us that the world is evolving in it and the city of Bulawayo. Hence the need for adaptation by the youths working together to bring about change in it is needed. And our hands working together and being part and parcel of this project to change the city and the face of the city of Bulawayo as a whole. The young people are key in ensuring that we are part and parcel of the climatic changes in the world. We also need to ensure that we gain the necessary knowledge of the climate issues, how they impact us and how we can contribute towards being part and the solutions. 
The Youth Climate Action Fund provides grant opportunities for us as young people in, out, in and out of school. We are need to ensure that we, we check our water footprints at home, school, in, even in our societies. As young people, we should be able to contribute towards the, the culture and conservation in our great city. The key to climate change is the need to keep our environment clean. We are the major contributors to litter generating within our schools. May we, motiv may we be motivated to think of recycling and upcycling projects like let us think of how we can make Bulawayo litter free and focus on the behaviors changes from a young age and contribute to the society in reducing litter. Keeping our city clean will help, to in, will help include the culture of cleanness within the city. What is needed from us and the future generation is to spearhead the preservation and the conservation of our natural resources. We have, worked, we have to work smart in reducing the greenhouse gases, emission of carbon fumes in the air, and the production, and the production of litter within the city, CPTs, even our townships, surroundings of Pumula as a whole. We need to protect the biodiversity as they and the landforms that do not have the disruptions of, 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 of litter. Upon us, we, we have to advocate for such places to be conserved, and we have to do so as to re reprotecting them and reducing greenhouse gases and sustaining, pro and sustaining promoting proper carb carbon cycles and nitrogen cycles as to generating proper rainfall as a city, even as a country, as a nation, as a whole. We are the stewards to making Ubulawa you better and we need a greater change amongst us. And we need a greater change amongst us is needed. Let us reduce plastic use and advocate for environmental policies that will help to sustain the benefits of Bulawayo as a whole. As I conclude, I would like to quote the, the late icon Nelson Mandela, who said, the future of the nation is in the hands of the youths. And my words are, the future of Bulawayo is in the hands of the youths. Your views matter to, make, to, to making towards the necessity changes of Bulawayo. Bulawayo Mute, Bulawayo Sanzegileyo, Masi Pambili. Thank you. Seaboga, thank you, uh, Your Worship, Junior Mayor. Seaboga Kakulu for encouraging us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our program. Thank you for coming. Um, if you could turn to your neighbor and tell them 20 things that you learned today. 20. <laughs> okay, tell them one thing that you are going to do differently. <laughs> Some of you are not even doing that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Your Worship, we've come to the end of our program. Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much, Pumula. We've had a very fruitful meeting, a very um, beneficial meeting in terms of uh, achieving our objective. May I invite uh, Father Tom to please close for us in prayer. Siabo. Before we bow our heads into prayer, we would like to encourage all of you to partake. Um, I, I, I think the gentleman went away, Your Worship. Um, there's a, a, a token of appreciation. I don't know the gentleman who's presenting it. Can you please come? You see, I close the meeting. Um, Pumula says they cannot allow the mayor to go home without anything in his hands. So you'll come and explain what this tree is and uh, you can take the microphone. So this is a baobab tree. Umkomo mauyu. Um, and this one is special. It's not just a baobab tree, but it's a crafted baobab tree. So, accordingly, um, baobab trees are supposed to start fruiting in 25 years if you are planting it from a seed. But this one will start fruiting in five years because it's crafted. So, those that love mauyu juice, umkomo juice, uh, we, we may start planning about making baobab plantations now. This is yours. Do not plant it at home, plant it in your plot, plant it um, in your farm. Uh, you can take it to Victoria Falls or Matopo National Park. I don't know where you're going to take it. It's yours. Okay.
and present it. Um, my, my wife, Sue, is going to be particularly pleased. My wife loves indigenous trees, um, and she's going to be very happy. Uh, I'm a kulu now, so the 25 years might be different, diff difficult for me, but my grandchildren, I'm sure, will benefit from it as well. <laughs> I, I, no, I understand that, but uh, thank you very much. Siabonga, thank you very much. Yeah, maybe we can capture that one. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to maybe just to, uh, allow the mayor to officially receive his baobab tree. Isn't it nice to be a mayor? You get to give your own baobab tree. Siabo, <laughs> my worship. Um, um, thank you very much. Thank you for the young men for that thought and also for what you are doing for the environment. Siabo, my cool. Um Tom, Father Tom, if you can please close for us. My apology for cutting you. So anyway, thank you so much for the job well done that you are doing in the city of Bulawayo. And also we ourselves as young people, let us also join hands in improving the city of Bulawayo. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, we come before you this evening. We want to thank you for our leaders that you chose we also want to follow in the foot, from their footsteps so that we may also be shepherdable. We want to pray and thank you for this program that was geared uh, um, to improve the lives of uh, young people, to change the mindset, to embrace good things. We pray for good things that are lying ahead of us, some we have already started to discover as fruits, and some we are to discover them as fruits tomorrow. May you bless our city and all those that wish good to, to it. Bless our families and also bless our young people who are struggling in life with unemployment, with drug abuse, substance abuse. We know, oh God, you are looking upon them. We pray also for the elderly of our community, those that are sick, those that have got no one to take care of, those without shelter. We pray that our leaders may, at a certain way, be considerate upon them. Bless this day, and all those that are going to be leaving and departing this place, protect them from all the dangers of health and life, associated with our roles. This we pray through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. It's been a good meeting. It's been a good day. And please visit our youth centers. This is one of our youth centers. As a city, we've got um, youth hubs or places where we provide recreation and also um, empowerment of young people. So this is part of our safe and inclusive city project. Thank you. God bless you all.